problems is tumor cells leave the breast. They spread into distant organs like the liver, the lung, the bone, the brain. And they can sit there for a period of time before they eventually, a fraction of the cells, wake up and start destroying the body. And that's what 94% of women are breast cancer have. So um, what's unique about breast cancer is that this time between spread and actual growth with these distant organs can range from months to years to even decades. As our therapies have gotten better, we haven't started, we haven't cured metastases or prevented them from happening. We've pushed them off farther and farther down the road to the point where now it's more and more common that several years go by before the cells wake up and 30% of all breast cancer patients this is what happens. We have metastases and unfortunately the journey with breast cancer is typically less than that. So right now there's not one therapy that selectively targets these cells when they're born. We have this huge window of opportunity that's unexploited. This constitutes the majority of a woman's uh, experience with her breast cancer. This is what keeps them up at night wondering, is their cancer going to yep. occur and when? And so what can we do about it? So this is our challenge I wanted to show you. Because uh, I think it really helps to visualize what we're seeing here. Is This is the bone marrow. Mm -hmm. And this is the one cell that we're trying to target. For one in a million, there might be thousands of them lying around our body. And mm -hmm. we need to find a way to get rid of them, and only them, without any other peripheral toxicities. So how are we going to do that? The lab takes a number of different approaches, but I wanted to tell you about one of them because I thought it's a really cool story about how uh, Candace over there asked a really basic question uh, that many of other people had observed what she had observed, but nobody had actually bothered to ask why. We asked why. We didn't know it was going to end up helping people, but the answer, I think, is absolutely going to end up helping people. And the question was this. So you can see that cell right now, not because we stained it with a breast cancer marker, but because we use a protein from a jellyfish called a green fluorescent protein. I read about it. Yeah. <laughs> it was awarded a Nobel Prize, and it's a big deal because you can take a gene uh, from jellyfish, you can put it in a cell, and it'll fluoresce green. Mm -hmm. What a name. Um, and the problem is when you put these cells into a mouse with a full immune system, this is what happens. The tumor, instead of forming, after about a week, uh -huh. it starts getting attacked and they disappear. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, they go, well, this is an artifact, I'm going to find a way around this, I want my experiments to work, and they don't care. Candace said, this is unacceptable, people's experiments are being tainted by this, we need to figure out what's going on. And so we had this profound immune response, and we figured out that it was due to that green fluorescent protein. And so Candace solved that problem, we found a way around it, but in the meantime, we thought, well, there's a silver line. We have a tumor forming in a mouse. Mm -hmm. We have a profound immune response against that tumor. What's happening to these cells as they leave the mammary gland of that mouse and start going to the other parts of the body? Are they still going to be there? Or are they going to survive? And if so, how are they evading that immune response? Can we figure that out? And if we can, can we get around it and actually start killing these cells? So this is what that looks like. This is a lung. This is a single one of these cells that left that mammary gland and went mm -hmm. into the lung. Mm -hmm. And we looked at all these exotic ways it could be evading immunity, and the answer turned out to be remarkably simple. It's a numbers game. So this population is one in a million. The immune cells that are meant to detect it are one in a million. And if you want two one in a million populations to interact and interact time and time again, it's like trying to win the lottery again and again and again. And it's just not going to happen. So these are the cells that are specific to that tumor. And you can tell they're close, but they're just not close enough to get rid of it. So how are we going to? How are we going to solve that problem? Yeah. Well, it turns out, you know, we work with Stan Riddell, who uh, your husband was here last time visited with. Yeah. Uh, we can boost immunity. We can up the number of antigen-specific T cells, the T cells yeah. that can direct, that can detect that tumor cell. We can do it through vaccination. We can do it by engineering T cells, mm -hmm. and when we do so, we can tilt that numbers game into our favor. And so, what does that look like? So Ian over there took this video. Here's our dormant cell. Those magenta guys are, are the immune cells. They're flying around and they latch on, and then they start calling their friends. And then the tumor gets right. So this is great, but it's a green fluorescent protein that you're not going to have in a breast cancer patient. How are we going to actually make this apply to people? Well, there's two hypotheses that come out of this work. So one is that the immune response to the breast tumor, if it transmits to the bone marrow and elsewhere, it dictates who's going to have these cells lying around their body and whether or not they're going to wake up. The second is for the people who don't have that response, and only the people who don't have that response, can we engineer it to help them? So someone with breast cancer who doesn't have a strong enough immune response to the breast tumor, can we boost that response through vaccination, through uh, engineering T cells, 
and start getting rid of these cells, get their, get rid of all these dormant cells so they don't get metastases down the road. So what this did was turn into a, a project now that's going to involve 900 uh, patients where we're getting their bone marrow at time of surgery, we're looking for these dormant cells, mm -hmm. we're profiling their immune systems, and we're defining up front who has a stronger immune response to their breast tumor and who doesn't. Does that predict who will recur and who won't? And for those people who don't have a strong immune response, we're profiling these tumor cells out of the bone marrow, figuring out what's on their surface and unique to that surface, and engineering immunity against them. So this is a project that involves multiple cancer centers, epidemiologists, immunologists, oncologists. But I think what's also really cool about it is from the inception, you know, we've worked with Fran Bisco for the National Breast Cancer Coalition. Sure. And we have advocates who are involved in this project from stage one, from step one, and you're going to meet some of them, I think, later on today, Terry Blastro and uh, Linda Weatherby as well. And so this is a project that was a combination of science, a combination of advocacy, and you know what we're basically geared up to do now is, is profile all these cells out of people and start actually taking this from something that is doing really well in a mouse against the protein, the screen fluorescent protein, and start making it work in people. And so what I thought would be kind of cool is uh, Sydney has been looking through these bone marrow aspirates from breast cancer patients and can show you what this actually looks like in a person's bone marrow wow. and what these cells look sure. like. So, yeah. so go ahead, take a seat here. We have this patient set up for you. So this is one of our actual patient samples that we have here on the microscope. Yeah. I can raise the chair. Oh, I see it. Yeah. So you can see the various colors of right. the cells. And these cells that are staying red right here are actually the cytokeratin positive cells, which are the epithelial cells. And those are cells that are not naturally found in the bone marrow. And so that's a marker of this cell that has come from this breast tumor and disseminated to the bone marrow. And with that, with that, we're able to see patients that have these disseminated tumor cells. Yeah, and then Sydney Miles Labs developing approaches to capture these needles in the haystack and profile Where's everything Mala? that's on the surface. Mala, come see. And John, you should come see too because you're doing the cancer work. You need to see what it yeah, looks like. Yeah, go ahead. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. John, come on. Oh. So you're looking for those red cells there. So this, See that? Yeah, so this has now turned into a $38 million consortium funded by the DOD. Uh -huh. uh, we're, like I said, we're taking samples from 900 patients. Yeah. We're doing all kinds of biology, fundamental immunology, mm -hmm. but we're now doing it in the context of humans. Yeah, go ahead, take a look. And, you know, uh, success is, is the only thing we're thinking about, right? And so yeah. even if we're 100% successful, we're going to be able to prevent metastases. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we're thinking about is what do we do for 10% yeah. of all breast cancer patients many other cancer patients who walk in the door already stage four, already with metastatic disease. Yeah. And so Tom uh, wrote, the, wrote the blank check and uh, we're one of the first cancer centers to have a center for research excellence focused entirely on metastasis. We're gonna leverage all of the interdisciplinary talent here at the Hutch, people who work on cancer, people who don't, neuroscientists, immunologists, everybody across the gamut, patient advocates from the inception, and we're gonna take blue sky approaches to find not just better therapies for metastases, but curative um, approaches for metastases. And that's what and Cyrus is being a bit more honest, but one of the incredible things he does is train the next generation of scientists. You probably don't believe, okay, but this is how many months in? Just a couple, uh, just over a year. Just a year in, and she was able to do that for you, okay? Which just tells you the remarkable training that happens in this laboratory. Graduate students, postdocs, Undergraduate students, really remarkable. So yeah, it's all part of it. You know what? The press should take their <laughs> picture <laughs> because <laughs> they are the super <laughs> weapons. Right. You know, I'm just yeah. like the, you know, the <laughs> magnifying the message. Right, come, on, guys. come on, no, look, you're making really this good. happen. Yeah. You're giving people hope. The press needs to see you. That's great. Thank you. Thanks. Can I get a picture of y'all? Yeah. Yes. yes. Desire. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. My gosh. I mean, I, you know, had so many friends who've had breast cancer, and uh, in 1991, I started the Biden Breast Cancer Initiative, and we went into high schools and we talked to young girls about how to do breast self exam and. And then, uh, you know, so that they take the message home to their mothers and their grandmoms and, and so that they would be conscious of their health and, and do breast self exams. And, um, you know, that's what we have to do. I mean, it's all about prevention, I think, and uh, getting it early because when, it, you know, as you well know, that's the key.
Mm -hmm. so. And this is all about prevention and metastasis yeah. space, right? So yes. preventing metastasis. So even if somebody does get diagnosed with an early stage cancer, if the story ended there, great. So mm -hmm. how can we just stop that cancer from occurring? Yeah. And preventing the lethality. Yeah. And again, thank you. Thank all you. supported by the NIH <laughs> and by the Moonshot. <laughs> yes. This makes an enormous difference. It really does. Well, you know how personal it is to yeah. me and to Jerry. So. Yeah. yeah. Makes a huge difference. So. Anyway, thank you. Yeah, thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. Thank you for your And thank you to the press for covering it because yeah. otherwise the public's not going to know about this. And if somebody is diagnosed with breast cancer or has it right now, they need to hear this, that there is hope for them. So thank you for being here. Thanks. Great. Okay. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Great to meet you.